Kevin, in chapter eight, you deal with the issue of sexual purity, which obviously mm-hmm. is a is a big issue mm-hmm. in the church. And uh, specifically, you you address couples, uh, couples who are dating, or couples who are in a relationship or engaged, who are asking the question, "How far is too far?" So, wondering wondering if you could, for a few minutes, just uh, address that couple who who is asking a question like that: "How far is too far?" when it comes to sexual activity before marriage, what would you say to them uh, as their pastor? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've had that question before. I asked that question myself when I was dating and, and engaged. Uh, a, a few principles come to mind. One is, okay, why are you asking that question? If, maybe very just sincere, but I mean, you know, as hormones are raging, people, you have a desire, a God-given desire to, to act on that. And to, but I would just want to be careful. Okay, is the question sort of how close can I get to sinning without sin? Or can the Proverbs, can I hold fire in, in my lap and not be burnt? You know, we, we want to think how can I maximally glorify God in this relationship? So that's sort of the first principle. You, you don't want to just think, okay, how much can I get away with? Second principle, you know, from Song of Solomon, you know, not to stir up love before it's time. Once those, those feelings get going and once you start doing so, you, you, the appetite's insatiable and you want to do something more and something more and something more. And a lot of Christians stronger and holier than Tony and Kevin or the people listening have fallen into a lot of sin thinking that I can I can shut off this you know after step A and B and I won't get to C and D but that's very hard to do and, and I, so I always say to our college students and single people you'll never regret what you don't do you never get married and say you know how's marriage how's how's being a newlywed how's intimacy oh it's great man I just wish we had really tried a lot of stuff I just, you know, that we're just really struggling because we didn't experiment more. No, but you often hear, I regret all the things that we did do or that we weren't more careful. And then finally, I have a, a long section on the book about this. It may be somewhat controversial for folks, but it makes sense. And I'm, I'm getting it from a, a, a lot of it from a very good book that just came out from Crossway on sex, dating, and relationships, it's called. But they, they say, if we're supposed to treat our sisters in Christ as sisters in Christ in all purity. Shouldn't that have some bearing on how we understand the dating relationship? I don't, I, I don't get bent out of shape if you call it courting or dating or, you know, homeschool ball or whatever you want to call it, but th- this category of sort of, I'm not married, but I can sort of act like I almost am married just, just doesn't exist. And so I would challenge single people to see and to think through this lens. Until I'm, I'm married, okay, I, I'm treating this young woman like a sister in Christ. What would I do with my sister? You gonna do that with your sister? Make out with your sister? You know, what would I do with my brother in Christ? And you may say, but we're dating and we're committed. Really? A lot of dating relationships. That you, all you have to do is you know, text and say, you are out or something, I don't know what they do, and it's gone. So how, how committed is that? You, you will not regret what you don't do. And I think God does not mean for us to have this category of not married but act except for a couple of things like I really am married. And it would save us a lot of trouble, a lot of heartache, and I think a lot of sin.